Welcome back, guys. Welcome to week four. We have another exciting week this week. Uh, we had piglets, so you get to check in and see how they're doing. Uh, we finally started our water catchment system because last year we really didn't like how much municipal water we were using to water all of our gardens. Uh, we hang our 35 pound prosciutto. We start a sourdough starter and lots more. So let's get to it. Let's go. Good morning, guys. So last night we had a uh, pretty severe storm that's still going on a bit and still supposed to get winds for most of the day today. So not ideal for what we want uh, in our first first couple weeks here. Our poor little ducks in the deck duck coop. I'm gonna try and get a towel in front of them today. This is the probably the biggest devastating thing is we've got our tomatoes and peppers inside, but a lot of our starts were uh, in our kind of little deck greenhouse there. So we're still getting decent wind, so I'm not even gonna bother picking that up and going through it, I don't think, until we slow down later today. So not ideal. I'm gonna get some wood for firewood and get that going because our fires are our powers out. And uh, yeah, hope there's no other damage around the property. So, frustrating day out here today with the wind that got up to uh, about 90 kilometers an hour this morning, last night. It's still supposed to keep going uh, today, but our deck greenhouse with all of our starts fell over, so this is uh, what we're dealing with now and just trying to salvage. I already did that one with our chickpeas and black drying beans and trying to save the rest of our beans and squash here with what we can do, but uh, yeah, super frustrating. I mean, even if we get back, like say I replant this whole thing of beans, there's about 10 different varieties of beans in the rows in there. Some are bush beans and some are climbing beans. It will depend on where we're gonna plant them. And now who knows what's gonna be what, but uh, frustrating day. It's not what we wanted to be dealing with. That's gonna set us back weeks, so. We'll be able to salvage some and get some going, but uh, we'll definitely be doing a replant as soon as some of this wind dies down. So, back to it. Hi guys, we are here at the bees today. We're gonna be doing a little bit of an inspection looking for eggs um, in the frames to make sure that the queen is laying and then just topping up their feeders that are inside of the hive. So here we go. We're gonna start with this white one. Hello. I'm gonna take a couple of frames out so it's a bit easier to work with. I'd probably just move that over and check the middle one maybe, yeah? That's kind of what I was thinking. They're usually laying a little bit closer to the center just because it's warmer. So we're going to start with this one and just give it a little look. There's the queen. See the queen? Yep, and I see eggs. Great. Sorry guys, I do not have a suit so I'm not getting closer today. But there is eggs in there, so that is kind of all we want to look and see. We don't want to disturb them too much, especially because the queen is on this um, frame. So I'm just going to put it back in here. Okay, buddy, you got to move. And then put these two empty frames back. hard to see with this on. I know. Do you want to come peek in and see if there's any bees? Uh, I can tell that there's two. Live ones? Yeah. Mm. But I can't because it's so dark in there. Yeah. If there's one or two, it's probably not that big of a deal. So I'm thinking just put the funnel resting in there and then... And if there's no bees in the close one, it'll it, you just have to fill one hole, right? Do it without spilling it everywhere. Oh, sorry, guys. Careful. <laughs> it's still nice and uh, muddy where we are. Pop this there instead. Thank you. 
So we've just got some little cut up corks that we're gonna put in there just so they don't kind of drown. They've got uh, holes in those, it's called a frame feeder. Um, they've got holes in the sides they can grip onto, but we did notice one or two have drowned, so the corks will just make it so they have something to float on. Right, we're gonna close this hive back up just because we don't want to disturb them too much. Didn't hear any crunchy sounds, so I don't think too many, or at least any of them died, hopefully. And then we're gonna move on to this purple one. Okay. Okay. Try and do this without falling because it's super muddy back here. Yep, we got eggs in this one too. Yes. They don't look capped though. Oh, maybe some of them. It's really hard to tell with this hat on. Oh yeah, there's definitely some brood. Yeah. Yeah, not fully capped yet, but there's definitely some yeah. brood in there. They look like they're at the same stage as the other one too, so nice. that's good. Happy with that. That means she's laying. <clears throat> Got two really active queens, which all is all we wanted to know. Amazing. Those ones do seem a lot calmer, don't they? Yeah, they're definitely not as noisy. with that there's brood in there so we know that the queen's laying and they're eating lots of the sugar water and pollen patty so I think we're off to a great start this year hi guys just got a couple things going on in the kitchen tonight that we thought we would share with you um, one that we really wish we got going a little bit earlier because it's super simple uh, but doing a sourdough starter so we'll kind of monitor this and post on our Facebook page uh, and do some daily updates, but uh, we've just got a jar. Sourdough starter is super easy. All we're gonna do is take 100 grams of flour um, that we've weighed out here on our scale, 100 grams of water, uh, mix those into a clear jar together, um, and let those sit for 24 to 48 hours uh, to start seeing some bubbles. Um, and then we're gonna start feeding the sourdough every day after that for seven to 10 days until it's ready to use and we can start baking some bread. So. Super easy, all we're gonna do is put this into our jar. And if you wanna kind of follow this update, you can go on and follow us on Facebook on Love Enough the Land, and we'll kind of post some daily photos about how this is coming along. And on 100 grams of water. We may need to add a little bit more water, they said, but we'll see how this goes. That looks alright. So we're definitely looking forward to taking advantage of our one cheat item this year, which is uh, flour. So we'll be able to keep the sourdough starter going and make bread and a whole bunch of other things. Once you've got it all mixed in, all you want to do is leave it in a nice warm spot. So normally in your kitchen, close to the stove or something like that, but anywhere that's nice and warm. And we're probably not gonna see too much movement on it today, uh, or over the next 24 hours, I should say, but we're just gonna seal it up. And you kinda wanna mark where the level is so you can see um, if it's rising and falling. So that'll be a little bit more important once we kinda get into day three or four. Um, but yeah, we've got that there. We'll leave that in a warm place. And hopefully in the next 24 to 48 hours, we'll start seeing some bubbling as it starts uh, fermenting a bit. Um, the other thing we've got going on here that we've 
pulled out of uh, our fridge downstairs that's been curing for 45 days now, which is kind of crazy, um, is this nice big huge piece of cured prosciutto. Well, it's not quite prosciutto yet, but um, we're not gonna do too much with it. We're just going to, just wanted to show you guys. It was 36 pounds when we first did it. So we're gonna give this a weigh so that we get a starting weight on it. Um, and we're gonna kind of hang it, probably gonna be a year and a half, I would think, um, for this size until it gets a certain percentage of weight loss. Um, but super happy with how the cure turned out. You can see here, this has got some really nice marbling um, down here on this point. And um, when you cure it, it gets a lot firmer. So you can actually kind of see this nice kind of marbling that comes off there and just how easy that is to slice. So um, obviously it still has to cure, but that is gonna be some nice prosciutto in a long, long time from now. So we had our, our first pig here, Rosie, who's just had her first set of piglets. There's nine happy, healthy piglets here. They're nursing away. and. Stay nice and warm. Oh, it's okay, Rosie. Stay there. You're okay. They are happily feeding right now and staying nice and warm all cozied up with each other. And we've got our other mama over here in her nest kind of on this side. So you can tell from this breathing in her breast that she's going into labor here. And I'll try and film the first one. I can probably help her out a bit and then I'll, I'll film the last ones once it's all done too, if we can get through it all. So let's show what I know. Second mom's up and moving around now. Uh, didn't obviously have her piglets right away like I thought. And uh, it's starting to get dark here, so I kind of call it a night, head home. Ravens have uh, disappeared for the night, so uh, the other piglets are safe. And we'll come back at the break of dawn tomorrow and check in and see how they're doing. Good morning. It is early the next morning and Heading back to the pig pen here, uh, just to see what happened overnight. I'm guessing mama had her other piglets, but uh, as you know from yesterday, I've been wrong before, so let's go see what we got. Second mom still hasn't uh, given birth yet, so my timing was way off. As of last night, it is first thing in the morning. Uh, you hear the ravens flying over top. That's one thing we're battling right now to keep them out of the pig pen. Um, so yep, we'll keep checking in and keep you updated. I love how they all just cuddle up and try and stay warm. Now the next day, next evening, 6.30 at night here. Uh, and second mama still has not had her baby, so we're still waiting on that. First mom's still doing pretty good uh, over here. We got the heat lamps uh, for the piglets and the her nest is over there. So one ready for her whenever she decides to have them and we'll keep you posted. I don't know, she's gonna have a pee right while I'm doing that. Okay, we'll keep you posted and uh, check in and let you know as soon as it happens. Hi guys, so this is going to be some uh, horrible lighting for this unfortunately, but uh, after being wrong, gosh, almost three days ago now, uh, Queenie is finally going into labor. There's starting to be some leakage, which is kind of gross, but that's uh, a sign things are on their way. So, uh, of course, it is nighttime here. Um, so she's about to go into labor and Rosie's over there with her piglets and her little nest with her heat lamp and... Queenie's all set up in this one, I'll show you. Of course, she decided to move her nest away. We got all of her straw under that heat lamp, so she was all set, and she moved everything over here, of course, so she's six inches away from the wall. So um, we'll do our best to film this and show what we can, but uh, yeah, not gonna be the best lighting, but exciting, they're finally coming. So of course, I'm filming for half an hour, thinking it's coming out and wrong again. Go to charge my phone because it is almost dead and come back and one piglet <laughs> popped out already. So uh, I helped her with a couple. There are now three healthy looking little piglets that are... One's kind of just over the far side there. You may not be able to see on the front leg. There she is. So three out and she's well underway now. So uh, And then once it's out I'm going to stop recording again because I'm on my own. So I've got my gloves here and help the little ones out, get dried off, and get them over to feed on mama. Alrighty, oh, sorry, I haven't been able to uh, catch any actually coming out yet. Been too busy kind of assisting with these guys and making sure they're all okay, cleaning and drying them off, and uh, move the heat lamp uh, over just so it's directly above them as well, because mama, of course, moved her nest this afternoon right before she had them, so. 
Uh, yeah, this will probably be it for tonight. I'm probably going to head home soon. It's uh, 1 in the morning now, so they all seem to be coming out happy and uh, healthy. So it should all be good. We'll come back in the daylight tomorrow and get some better footage and uh, show you guys all the new pig piglets and get a, get a final count on them. All right, so we are back here uh, in the pig pen, in the barn here after a couple days. Uh, sorry that the birth wasn't the best filming. It was late at night and filming under that red uh, heat lamp doesn't work so well. But uh, yeah, we've got two litters here. A few didn't survive out of the first one, unfortunately. Um, but the second one uh, of eight's looking all good. So we've got 14 all together. So we'll show you a little bit of how they're doing. So this is the second set. You see they got all their bed of straw down here in the corner and under the heat lamp to keep them nice and warm. They love, they don't go too far from that, so. Eight little guys there all snuggled in. Aren't ya, hey? They're so cute when they're this small. And the other six, these guys were born uh, two days earlier, I guess, so they're a little bit bigger than the other guys, but they're in their little nest here. And their little tails. So cute. So they're keeping mama busy, they feed every, uh, hour or two off of her when she's not uh, eating we just fed them so that's why they're not uh, right next to them right now but keep you updated on their progress and uh, yeah probably be about four or five weeks we'll keep them up in the barn with some extra heat and then we'll most of them are being sold because we obviously don't need 14 piglets uh, but we're gonna keep two down um, that we'll move down to that front field with the mamas and put them back with the poor papa who's super lonely down there on his own right now so We'll check back in and keep you guys posted. A bit of a chaotic mess right now, but I'm about to make hazelnut milk and hazelnut flour. So if you guys want to check out how to do that, um, you can head over to From the Field and we have a really awesome video up there uh, for you to check out. For now, I am going to get to this and uh, yeah, see how it turns out. So one of the things we really didn't like about our first year was just we put in a bunch of extra gardens. We had so many plants going on was how much water that we used. Uh, and we were using the municipal water system that gets fed in um, from a big lake that we have that feeds most of the island. So this year we really wanted to put in a, a water catchment system to start harvesting our own rainwater that we'll use for all of our watering. So a um, couple things we'll show you the first part this week um, that we're putting all of our infrastructure in place and then in a future episode we'll show you all the piping and the pumps that we have to use. Unfortunately for some things, fortunately for others, uh, our property is on a really big slope um, from top to bottom so we either have to pump it up or pump it down so we'll be doing a catchment system off of our roof pumping it up to our giant water tank and then the natural gravity will kind of feed our hoses and watering systems that we have uh, throughout the summer when we need that water so let's get into it so the first step in that process is capturing the rainwater off of the gutters of our house so um, you can see here I've uh, just cut off the gutter with a grinder We've attached uh, one of these neat little pipes that we found at our hardware store. They're only like four bucks. Um, so we put that in, in through our lattice and we'll go behind here and show you the rain barrel um, that we have that's gonna collect the water before we pump it up. And we're doing one on either side of the house that will then get pumped up to our big one. So let's go check out the rain barrel. So here on the west coast of Canada, there is no shortage of rain, so no excuse for not uh, harvesting our rainwater. We get tons of it throughout the year. Um, I hooked this one up a week ago, and this 50 liter rain barrel was full after one day of rain. Uh, you know, we got a decent sized roof that was funneling that off. So um, it just comes through from the gutter, feeds into here, goes through a little filter um, into this 50 liter barrel. And then in a future episode, we are going to connect these two barrels to a pump, which will then pump all the way up to our large water tank uh, that's being delivered. Um, we'll show you getting that in place as well, but we'll just go set up the other rain barrel on the other side of the house, and then we'll get up top. So as you can see, I've just taken a grinder and sort of cut through our gutter at a nice high point there, and we'll get that part taken off. Um, but basically, you just connect this to your gutter. I may have to put a clamp on it, uh, depending how snug it fits, and then you just run it into your rain water system. Like I said, these are only about four or five bucks uh, at our hardware store, so super cheap. Uh, easy fix to do. So that slides onto there. Get up nice and kind of high so it sits snug in there. And then that's honestly pretty much it. That'll flood through um, that filter there, the grate, to make sure no kind of bits are getting in there. And 
pumps will fill up in no time with our weather, I'm sure. So um, our big water tank should be delivered shortly. Let's go up and have a look. Alright, so it's a little bit bigger than we thought even, so um, we're not going to get it into place today, probably going to need some help with that, um, but we do need to level out a nice area for it to sit on, so um, we're going to start shoveling some gravel and get that into place and get it all ready to go. Okay, that's it for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. We're really excited to keep working on our water catchment system here and get that uh, running and capture the huge amount of rain we get every year here in the Pacific Northwest. So uh, help us out, hit like and subscribe below. Uh, any questions or comments, let us know and we'll see you guys next week. Bye guys.